next thing the professor says is that I can't even make my own data conform with themselves. And he now displays two slides. I'm going to show the first of them now. And this slide is what has happened to global temperatures since the turn of the millennium on the 1st of January 2001, when the third millennium of the Christian era began. And since that date, there has been a formal trend in temperatures. It's not at present a statistically significant fall, but it is a fall. It is certainly not the very rapid rise in temperatures which the UN's climate panel, the IPCC, had predicted. And once again, I explained, and explained very clearly in my talk, that this graph was compiled by us by taking four separate global temperature data sets and averaging their monthly anomalies. That was explained in my talk. And what the professor does is he pretends I didn't say any of that. And he also pretends I didn't say why this particular graph was produced in my talk. And the reason why it was produced is I was going through various lies that the climate science community had been guilty of in recent years, which made me concerned about whether we were hearing the honest truth from those who are pushing the extremist views. And I had been testifying in uh, mid-2009 in front of the United States Congress, the House of Representatives, and I had produced this graph that you're looking at now, which shows this fall in global temperatures. And the ranking minority member on the House Energy and Commerce Committee, before which I was appearing, leant forward and he turned to the director of the NCDC, that's the National Climatic Data Center of NOAA, Mr. Tom Carl, and he said, Mr. Carl, I find it astonishing, don't you, that in months of hearings about global warming, none of the highly paid operatives of the various US government agencies that have told us global warming is a problem have admitted to us that for the last seven or eight years, as it then was, there has been rapid and significant, for it then was, global cooling. He said, Mr. Carl, would you care to explain why we haven't been told this by any of you? Do you not think it's a relevant fact? And Mr. Carl flannelled and fudged and wriggled and mudged and he wouldn't admit that there had been nine years of global cooling. So in the end, and quite rightly, uh, Joe Barton, the ranking minority member on the committee, lost his temper. And he said, Mr. Carl, I want your evidence to be presented in writing to this committee as to whether or not Lord Monckton is right in saying that there has been a decline, albeit a small one, in temperatures over the last seven or eight years, and I want Lord Monckton to write to us explaining how it was that he came to that conclusion. So the next slide I showed in my presentation, which I'm showing you now, it looks quite similar to the one you've just been looking at. It's not identical, and the reason why it's not identical is that it's not the same slide. It's not all four temperature data sets, because I thought, hey, wouldn't it be a good idea if we just took the NCDC global temperature data set, which is one of the four we used for our graph, because Tom Carl is the director of the NCDC, and let's see if we calculate the least squares linear regression trend on the data, which gives you some idea of which way the data is trending, and let's do that calculation and see if we get a downward slope in that trend. In other words, that we're still getting cooling, even if we use Tom Carl's own data set. So I did that. There's the graph. As you can see, it's falling. It's not falling quite as fast as the combined data sets because the NCDC data set is tampered with in various ways that I don't like but don't have time to go into at this point. Nevertheless, it's clearly a falling trend. So I sent that graph 
to Congress and said, yes, it is right that global temperatures have been falling. Tom Carl should have admitted it because his own data set shows this perfectly clearly. Now, of course, I accept that a nine-year period of data is not a very long period of data. You can't certainly draw any permanent conclusions about how global warming has forever come to an end or we're heading for a new ice age or anything like that. But certainly we can say that a nine-year period of measurement is surely likely to be more reliable as an indicator of what's going on than the 13-month period of measurement which uh, Professor Abraham had tried to draw a conclusion from a few slides ago. But now what is curious about this is that I had made it perfectly clear in my talk exactly what it was that I was talking about, why I was showing these two quite similar graphs, first the one and then the other, and why they were broadly similar, but why they were also slightly different from one another. All of this was clearly explained in my talk. There could be no doubt about what I was saying. So along comes the professor with a really quite extraordinary slide, which we will now show, in which he compares the two slides that I've just shown you, and he points out various small differences between them. And he says, here is Chris Monckton using two slides of the same data. Why would I need to use two slides of the same data? Didn't even that occur to him? Because they weren't slides of the same data, they were slides, one of which was from four data sets, and one of which was only one of those four data sets. And so, of course, they weren't going to be exactly coincident. And he then says he's using these two slides of the same data set, knowing that I didn't. But he says, no, they're the same graph, and look at all these differences between them. And then he shows a slide which goes through the differences point by boring, insignificant point. Yeah. And so then he says, so we see that Chris Monckton doesn't get the IPCC right. I don't know what he means by that. He doesn't get his own data right, so how can you trust conclusions drawn from them? Now, can anyone take this man seriously as a scientist if he uses his position as a scientist in this way, thus to try to crush a layman by deliberately ignoring what the layman actually said and then inventing some complete fiction which has nothing whatever to do with my talk and then to say that that fiction proves that I didn't know what I was talking about and that my data didn't even agree with themselves.